to learn the good, the bad, and the reality of the off-grid lifestyle, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. At the beginning of this video, I showed you that I knocked this building down yesterday. I also showed you that in yesterday's video. And I simply just used some twine, <laughs> to be all honest, and, and used the back of the truck, pulled it out, just knocked it over. It was just too unsafe to do anything else. So this is the result of getting the tin roof off of the trailer. Now, for those who don't know, Carolyn and I have been working every day that it hasn't rained or it's too cold or whatever to clear off this trailer so we can build our tiny house on it so i'm sure you can see where the bucket is that bucket is where our tiny house is going to stop so from the front of the trailer all the way to the bucket is where our little tiny house is going to be that's 200 square feet then where you see the wood at now where we stopped that's where we're going to cut the trailer off we're going to cut the trailer off from here on back and scrap the trailer. And the reason we're gonna do that is because the, the back end of the trailer is right on the property line. And back in the day, you could do that. But after 2004, the, uh, the code book says you can't build or park a trailer within, I think, seven feet of the property line. So we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of it. We weren't gonna do anything with that spot anyways. A lot of people said, oh, use a greenhouse, build a porch. Well, we can still build a porch. I mean, if we look at the bucket again, all the way to the wood line you know we got plenty of room for our porch and besides that we only want to spend five thousand dollars to build our 200 square foot house we've budgeted it out we've looked at all the material costs of course material costs might go up now because the economy has uh, went bad i'm seeing a lot of articles the same materials are going up what i'm seeing go up isn't so much wood but like fixtures and sinks and that kind of thing. Fortunately, we don't need that kind of stuff. Really, I think we're gonna be okay, but it could go up. There, there's a lot of warnings about house prices going up and different things. So what we've done uh, in the last two days, we knocked the building down and that took, I don't know, just a couple of hours. I mean, and that wasn't hard work. That was just me crawling around, tying ropes up and pulling. This, I got up here at eight o'clock this morning and I wrapped up by 11. 
And that's what we've done almost every day. We work about three hours a day. And when I say we, Carolyn's over here, she's burning the materials, you know, the wood and different things that we can burn. And I'm over here and I'm just picking away at it. And we've done really good. Now think about it. We've only been here a month and almost two solid weeks was nothing but rain. And so with all the rain, we weren't able to work. It was just sloppy, muddy, dangerous. I also twisted my ankle when we first got here twice, same ankle. I almost thought it was broke there for a while. It's getting better, but boy, it still hurts. So, you know, I'm not moving around quite as fast as I, will, uh, I can. The other thing is, is I'm almost 49 years old. I recognize a lot of people are gonna say, oh, that's not old. And I'm not saying I'm old. What I'm saying is I'm older. I'm not a spring chick anymore. I'm, I'm getting up there in age. My hair kind of tells the story. Carolyn is almost 59. We're not young. And we're definitely out of shape. Both of us are just terribly out of shape. The nomadic lifestyle, we, we, we just didn't do anything in the nomadic lifestyle. This is the most activity we've had since we built the camper and after the pop-up camper fire. That took two weeks and man, that was exhausting. And so we're slowly getting back into shape, getting ourselves motivated. Now, the other thing you have to think about is Carolyn has a seriously bad back injury that some doctors have actually told her that she needs to get a surgery on. Now, Carolyn is never going to get a surgery on it. Uh, she doesn't take any medication for it, but she does do exercises and things to try to minimize the amount of pain that she's in. I think what she's doing here, trying to get back into shape, you know, raking the, the, the yard and, and doing what she can, really is making her back stronger. The more she works, the less it hurts. So I'm very proud of her for coming out here and giving it a try and working through the pain and, and getting stronger while she's doing it. Maybe she's building some muscle around that, that injury that's causing her so much pain. That's the point I'm trying to make is I, I've gotten a lot of comments in the last, I don't know, week or so saying, you know, I'm living vicariously through you and I'm trying to encourage you to actually do something to, to meet your dreams in life, to do something that you really want to do instead of sitting at home watching someone else do it. I really would like to help you move on. But I get a lot of people saying, I'm at the age I can't do anything anymore, can't work, I can't do this. I don't know your medical history. We're not spring chicks, like I said. And this is a lot of work. I mean, I'm constantly tired. I can only work three hours a day. Mowing the grass, I can only do it for about 10 minutes and I'm exhausted. So I'm out of shape. And this is hard on me. I'm worried that if I work too hard, I might have a heart attack. My point is, is if you're telling yourself, well, Rob's okay, you know, he, he's got this, and because I can't do it, I, I just don't know if that's true. Taking the tin roof off, I was taking more breaks than I was working. I cut a little, and then I would sit down. As a matter of fact, some guy said, you know, Carolyn and I take breaks here on the back of the truck. Guy, some guys pass by. He says, I can't understand how you're getting anything done. All I ever see you do is sitting on the back of that truck. I guess the economy going downhill and this pandemic was kind of a blessing for Carolyn and me. Unfortunately, such a tragic thing has to happen. It really forced us to refocus our ambitions. We were going to buy the material. As soon as we got to this bucket here, we were going to buy the material to start building the floor and then we were going to build the walls. We we're going to spend $500 a month. I've said that many times. So we spend $500, build the floor, $500, build the wall. And then after we get done building the floor, let's say it took three or four days to build the floor, we'd start working again on, on the trash. Since we can't go buy the materials because of the pandemic and everything's closed, it's really forced me to just focus on cleaning up the property. And I'm kind of glad I did. I think it's going to look nicer. It's really motivating me to move forward and to keep myself going. Working the front half of the trailer here, I just, I would do two or three boards and I'd, I'd quit. I was just not motivated. I just see work in front of me. Now that I see that we're actually making progress and things are moving forward, I don't know. It just seems like I'm working faster even though I'm working about the same amount of time. I recognize that we're all getting older and things don't work on our bodies like they used to. But I, I'm surprised how much I can get done in the three hours. Like I said, I'm exhausted. I hurt. I'll sit down on the truck uh, tailgate for 15 minutes. I'll get up and I'm limping. My ankle's hurting again. My left knee hurts. Every joint on my arms hurt. 
we got poison ivy, so we're constantly scr scratching and itching. It, you know, it's, it's pretty miserable trying to do all this, but it's very rewarding. And in the end, we're going to be living off grid, off our solar panels, off our own well, nobody bothering us, living in our little tiny house. It's very exciting. Give it a try. Do, do something today. Get up, maybe go for a little walk and motivate yourself. Just, I don't know, a five minute walk. And then tomorrow I'll try a six minute walk because that's really what Carolyn and I are doing. And we have accomplished so much. It's amazing what we've gotten done. Just working a little bit each day. Thanks for watching.